Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the 185th video in my Fallout 76 Surveil series, and here we are in the pit. Specifically, this is the trench section of the pit, which is outside of the Sanctum. All of that will start to make more sense as we go forward, but of course, some of you have probably been here before. So, I'm going to show you everything you can see here, the entire layout of the site. I've drawn maps, I've found all the lore items you can find here. We'll take a look at all of them, listen to them if, if that's applicable, and uh, I will show you the full list of all the loot. But what we're going to do first is take a look at the map of the area. Okay, so we are in the northwestern corner near the vertebrate landing. In fact, the uh, vertebrate is right there. We're right next to the pilot, Linux. She brought us here from the White Spring Resort. This area, I should have said before, was all made accessible via the pit expedition system that was added to the game. And uh, if you don't know, I've already covered the other section in the previous video to this one, uh, Surveil 184, and that's the Foundry. I also drew maps of that area as well. But anyway, back to the map. So the green areas are buildings, and I've labeled those alphabetically. Now, along with that, we also have that teal color. Those are tunnels. The black color is an area you cannot traverse. The yellowish area is a blocked area. That doesn't really come into too much uh, effect out here, but it will m make more sense. It'll be more obvious as to why I've noted areas to be blocked off when we get into the sanctum. And the white area is where you can walk. Now, all the blue arrows, those point up ramps or upstairs. And I, you can see I've noted all the collectibles on here. I don't really like how cluttered it looks, but we can look at individual buildings and they are noted on there as well. So it's easier to see where those collectibles are there. And just generally speaking, the overall map can help you guide you to these things. Now, the numbers on these things are completely based on how, uh, like the order in which I found these notes, terminals, safes, stuff like that. It's in no order like that. Also, the buildings being uh, labeled with letters is, those are my letter, <laughs> those are my labels. There's nothing at all about the lore that references that. Okay, out of the map again, we are still in the vertebrate yard, of course. Now that right there is Pittsburgh Union sign because we are in the Pittsburgh Union rail, uh, rail yard here. And right over there, that's the Abraxadine building or the Abraxadine uh, facility. There's a whole bunch of buildings out there. It's a complex of structures. Let me, I am wearing my Union suit because... <laughs> It's uh, Pittsburgh Union, and we're surrounded by Union fighters. Of course, completely different Union, but anyway. Uh, so the folks here are members of the Pittsburgh Union. You can see a Union worker in there. There are Union fighters out here. They control the area around the rail yard here, and they also have an outpost further to the south. Now, along with that, uh, they have some turrets. And there are some laborers as well. These are civilians that have been captured by the enemy faction, which are the fanatics. They're a group of bloodthirsty raiders who do some truly horrifying things. And we're going to see a lot of that here, especially once we get into the sanctum. So it's called the trench because there is a massive trench over behind the Abraxadine structures over there. And that was actually a combination of dumping that it was created by a combination of the dumping of abraxadine and the war but we'll get into that as we get to the actual lore items themselves now along with the fanatics there are also trogs there are rad roaches and there are mole rats and there are traps like uh, tesla arc traps there are spike board traps explosive traps bear traps so we got a, a lot of things to watch out for. Oh, flamethrower traps. Almost forgot about those. Okay, so why don't we take a look around the rail yard here, and then we will go ahead and check out the surrounding yard and the structures that are here in the yard. Just to point things out on my map, that is building A right there. That's building B. That's building C. And that over there is building D. Now, we'll take a full look at this site, though. And uh, what we have up here is basically an old turntable because this is an old Pittsburgh Union repair yard here. You can see they've got a whole bunch of these different little uh, train uh, sheds, and we got one right here. And this is the only one we can actually go into. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We've got a cooking station here with a little bit of uh, food. Well, in this case, just salt. If we look at these shipping containers, we can find some junk and a gun there, and there's also a pipe wrench there in terms of weapons. Uh, there's also this cabinet, which is locked, but it's just... Yeah, sometimes I don't find actually any loot in these things, uh, even if they are locked. And this is when the loot is supposed to have respawned, so I don't really know what to do about that. First safe right here, and this is a level 2 safe. There are four level 2 safes in this area and a level 3 safe as well. Now, along with the uh, turntables here, the turntable here in the center, well, first of all, a uh, tinker's workbench, and there's also some more junk and a little bit of food here. Now, along with the whole turntable area, 
We got this area, but there's nothing to see back here. This is an old military train. We'll see a little bit more of that train when we get uh, off the yard, off that direction. And I, if there was any sort of military supplies on here, it's long been uh, been looted by the residents of Pittsburgh or the members of the Union. There's nothing else to see over in this direction. So if we come back over this way, though, why don't we take a look inside Building C? This is the smallest building that I've labeled. We got a little bit of junk and some containers with some junk. And that's basically all that we have in there. With that said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at building A. Okay, so where the rail line goes in, we got two ledges. Then we have this a small structure inside the structure here. And then up there we have that elevated office. So let's take a look up here. Got a storage area, crates, barrels, forklift. And we even have some old motors here. These are uh, supposed. You know, this could be something that they would actually uh, use inside the trains as a replacement motors. Now down here we have this uh, worker here from before the war collapsed here. There are several skeletons like that which leads me to believe that a lot of people died here on the day of the bombs. Now right over here we have our first lore item, a note, Pittsburgh Union Railroad Worker Note. This is the fifth time this month JP and I have had to do a patch job on a corroded tank car. Whatever it is the Abraxo guys are dumping in, it's tearing through our cars faster than we can patch them. We're also down three folks, so they've gotten sick working near this stuff. We are not equipped to handle Abraxo's waste, and we are not going to kill ourselves fixing the train cars that they trashed with their chemicals. We're having a meeting later today to draft a formal letter of complaint. This has gotten out of hand. So, like they said, train cars are being destroyed by the waste coming out of Abraxodyne. Abraxo Bedine being the manufacturer of Abraxo, the detergent which we can find a box of right there. So, that's their typical product, but they are a chemical company. They produce a lot of different chemicals, and we are going to learn about at least two of them uh, that caused some problems. One of them being a much more serious problem than the other, but anyway. Uh, we've basically seen everything that's on that side, so let's head up over here. And we have a stash box. This is the only one that I know of inside the trench area. Now along with that, we have this area. And there's a terminal back there we'll get to. There are 10 hazmat suits that I found in this entire area. And you should keep in mind if you're going to loot these things, they weigh 5 pounds apiece. When I finished looting everything for the full tally of loot, I was wondering why I had 50 pounds of weight that I didn't know it was coming from. Hazmat suits. Now, along with that, there's a lot of Radaway. For some reason, it's not. There were a couple bags over here the other day. They're not today, but there's one over here. There's a lot of Radaway here. And Radex as well. So keep that in mind if you're looking for those things. Now over here, we have the Yardmaster's Terminal. Following up on an incident. Following up on incident reports. To Edgar Clemen. Edgar, have you been reading the incident reports I've been leaving with your secretary? The waste from your plant is nearly melting our tank trains. They've been corroding from the inside, leaking out and getting my folks sick with something fierce. Whatever this stuff is, we're not equipped to handle it. Unless you do something about it, I'm going to have to take drastic action to protect my workers. Ryan Gilbert, Yardmaster, Pittsburgh Union Railroad. Are you taking this seriously? To Edgar Clemen. Edgar, the barrels you used in the past were fine when it was just detergent ingredients, but expecting these things to hold up against this mess y'all have concocted, it's near impossible to transport safely. I'm not letting any of these on my train cars if you can't prove without a doubt that they won't leak on my trains or my workers. Frankly, I'm disappointed in you, Edgar, for trying to get such a lazy solution past me. I thought Abraxadine and the Pittsburgh Union Railroad had a good relationship, but this low-effort attempt at resolving the situation is starting to make me question that. Ryan Gilbert, Yardmaster, Pittsburgh Union Railroad. And important change. To Pittsburgh Union Rail Staff List. Starting today, we will no longer be handling the transportation of industrial waste from the Abraxadine Complex. Regular shipping and delivery duties will remain unaffected. If you have any questions about this change, please bring them to your supervisor. If you see unauthorized personnel attempting to dump waste into the train cars, please report them to your supervisor immediately. Ryan Gilbert, Yardmaster, Pittsburgh Union Railroad. So yeah, this stuff that they were dumping in these train cars is really nasty stuff. And <laughs> the trench is, of course, a testament to that. But again, we'll, we'll get to more of that, lo that uh, lore soon enough. Now, coming up these stairs, we can get to the, the level here right above that little office. We got some meds over here and some junk. But there's not really too much to see up here. So let's go ahead and head back down and then up this ramp to the elevated office on the other side. Got a little balcony here. And right over here, we have some more junk. Some containers of junk. Okay. All right. Down in here. Let's go ahead and head out. Back out into the train yard. 
Okay. Now, let's uh, finish exploring this level of the train yard. Nothing to see over here. Got some piles of tires and some old uh, uh, train wheels under there. But if we come over this way, we got this ledge with some barrels tossed on their sides, some debris, and a uh, flipped forklift. Now we have the train tunnels here. There's one that goes straight east, and then there's this one over here that goes east and then turns south and heads over into the Abraxadine complex. This is where the, trank, the tank trains were being filled and were coming out this way. Now, we got another gun here and some ammunition. And here we basically reach the edge of the Union-controlled territory. They've got their turrets here watching this tunnel. All right. That pretty much covers the lowest level of the train yard. We're going to go ahead and head up to the next level of the train yard, heading up these stairs. We've got another area. we got some tanks. We got another forklift, and in this area is full of barrels and plastic totes. Okay, let's head over this way. There's this truck here, you can't get into that. There is also a way out through here. We are not going to be going that way just yet. Uh, you might notice the quest marker there, and at the top right corner I've got the pit from Ashes to Fire, make contact with Danilo. We are not going to be doing the quest in this video. It will be necessary to view all of the Sanctum, so I will do some of it uh, off, the, off screen. Uh, but the point of this is to simply explore the area, not to do the quest. Okay, so coming over in here, we got Building B. It's not really too much to see in here. A little bit of junk here and there. No lore, no collectibles, nothing like that. Okay. More totes over there, more barrels. And we can head over this way. We can see the collapsed train tunnel there. And that this tunnel is also collapsed. Okay, now got a couple of doors here into building uh, D. Those are completely blocked. Let's go ahead and head up these stairs. And up to this ledge where we have the uh, <laughs> stuffed grizzly air with his meal and his beer. And we get a nice view of the Pittsburgh Union rail yard here. Okay, let's go ahead and head back down. Uh, before we get into any combat or anything like that, no, this is my uh, Fallout world. So I can jump really high. I do enormous amounts of damage and take very little. Makes it very easy to collect uh, lore though. Okay, so we're going to go into building D here. We got some loot. Some more junk here. And this is the first building that we've been in that's actually part of the Abraxadon complex. Now we come over here, we got some junk, and a rad roach. Okay, some ammunition there behind the counter. First aid kit, and here we go. We got some large tanks, one of which seems to be seeping something, and then we got a couple other tanks that also seem to be seeping something. Now, this is also where we're going to find more of the pre-war workers that are dead, such as this gentleman here. This uh, scientist that looks like he was trying to use the eyewash station or the safety shower. And then this other guy right back here with his cigarette in his mouth. Okay, that pretty much covers this section of the building. That area over there I'm going to count for as something else. We're going to cover that here in just a second. It's still part of building D, but we're going to go upstairs first. And here we have another worker and his terminal, or perhaps his successor's terminal, uh, sorry, his predecessor's terminal, because it says Jacob's terminal, and you'll see in a minute why I'm saying predecessor, or his successor's. This would be the successor to Jacob, that's my guess. Anyway, let's read Jacob's terminal. Okay, welcome Jacob Doyle, Pittsburgh Union Rail Incident. To Edgar Clemen, Mr. Clemen, while making my rounds this morning, I stopped by the train depot to get a copy of last month's ledger. While there, I witnessed a Pittsburgh Union railroad worker denying this week's waste export. I asked the worker to explain himself, and he said his bosses told him they wouldn't be transporting our waste anymore. Since I haven't received a memo about this today, I'm hoping this was just a miscommunication on their part, because we both know how severe an interruption in our waste disposal pipeline is. So, weirdly enough, a lot of the uh, periods and a lot of these terminal entries seem like there should be commas, for example, in between part and because, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but I should have said, this is Jacob Doyle. Edgar Clemens is another person within Nebraxidine, and he was the one that was receiving the messages from the head of the Pittsburgh Union rail yard. And he apparently was not sharing this information with other people. Okay. Getting out of hand. To Edgar Clemen. Pittsburgh Union Railroad still hasn't budged, and I'm starting to get a lot of questions from my staff about how we're going to dispose of the waste. To get the railroad back in our corner, we need to cease all production on PID 31148 until the lab folks develop a neutralizer. You've heard me say it a million times, and I'll say it again. Executing this trial run without a neutralizer for the waste was a huge mistake. 
This can't be ignored any longer, Edgar. Regards, Jacob Doyle, Abraxadine Complex Product Manager. Keep that PID in mind. 31148. This is the one that's causing them problems. This is the one where they don't have a neutralizer. This is the one that's eating out the train cars. Urgent memo. To product staff list, product staff, I have recently confirmed with the management at Pittsburgh Union Railroad that they will no longer be exporting any more byproduct from PID 31148. The waste has been corroding their tank cars, causing damage to both people and property. Our contract with the Pittsburgh Union Railroad has previously allowed us to delay the research and development of the waste neutralizer with the Union Railroad denying our exports. We can no longer rely on them to handle delivery to our external waste management partners out west. I don't know why West is capitalized there, and it does make me wonder where they were shipping this stuff. Uh, anyway. Our only solution to get the Union Railroad back on our side is to make the waste safe to store by accelerating our efforts to develop a neutralizer. Unfortunately, I've been told by leadership that we are forbidden to halt production of PID 31148. It is apparently more important to them that PID 31148 sees an uninterrupted trial run in the hands of our clients. In the meantime, waste generated from the continued production will be stored in our supply warehouses until further notice. We cannot store it for long before we're up to our knees in it, however. It is mission critical that we get a working neutralizer as soon as possible. Meet with your team leads to discuss the next steps. The clock is ticking. Regards, Jacob Doyle, a Braxidine Complex Product Manager. And my resignation. To product staff list, product staff. After... All my years of service at Abraxadine Chemical, recent events have forced me to announce my resignation from my position as product manager at the Pittsburgh Abraxadine Complex. Given the right time and resources, I've never seen a challenge this team couldn't tackle. It truly is a shame that management has not seen the same potential. It has been an honor and a privilege to work with everyone here. To whoever follows in my stead, I hope you see the same potential in this team that I do. I also hope that you can stand up to the mismanagement of certain leadership unlike myself. Thank you everyone and good luck on the challenging road ahead. Best regards, Jacob Doyle. So, like I said, either this is Jacob Doyle and he typed this thing up and then died, or this is his successor. Or maybe just someone else who was sitting at his desk on the day of the bombs. Anyway. We have the first of three copies of another note here, Office Pranks Memo. Uh, one thing to note real quick, uh, yeah, they were shipping out waste product from the production of another chemical. So as far as I can tell, some, well, I, we'll get to it later <laughs> because there's, it's not just the waste product from the, from the production of this other chemical. Anyway, uh, Office Pranks Memo. Memo regarding Office Pranks. At Abraxadine Chemical, we prioritize a safe and productive working environment. While we all enjoy some light-hearted fun in the office, it is important to remind everyone that we are a chemical company, and safety is paramount. In light of the incident yesterday regarding the improper usage of PID 31162 sample for a prank, we feel it important to remind everyone of how we expect employees to behave while on the clock. Rest assured, those responsible have already been appropriately reprimanded. Attached is an updated copy of the Employee Code of Conduct. Study it and be ready to take a test on the material tomorrow. There's a get well card and a jar to raise money for a wig for Margaret over at Sydney's desk. Consider signing it on your way out and throwing some change in the jar if the spirit moves you. So, <laughs> we're going to take a look at that. Uh, and again, the uh, PID on that one was 31162. So we have 31148. That's the one that's eating out the tank cars. And 31162 is the one that harmed Margaret. So we got this little office out here. And there's another rad roach right there. Okay. Back over here behind the desk. Well, we don't really need to be hot behind the desk. There's a note there, and there's another note here. Let's take a look at uh, Get Well Soon, Margaret. I'm assuming this is the jar they were throwing their change into, and this is probably some money people dropped off. Anyway, Get Well Soon, Margaret. The lab is not the same without you. Wishing you have a swift recovery, TW. We hired you to be a lab assistant, not a lab rat. Hope you get better soon. George from Floor 3. Once the surgery is done, you won't even be able to see the scars. I think you'll look even prettier than you did before, and that's saying a lot. Sending lots of hugs and kisses your way, Shannon. Sorry for the radiance, Anonymous. The Mr. Handy helping in your absence makes for poor conversation. Hoping to enjoy your witty banter again soon, Daryl S. So sorry to hear about the accident. Wishing you the best, and get well soon, Kyle. Hey, at least your hair looks awesome, E.T. <laughs> and concerned employee. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that when we learn what 31162 is. Okay, concerned employee. 31148 shoots through these cheap plastic barrels like a kid at a candy store. 
This is going to become a huge problem when you consider the failed batches, like 3114042, react exponentially more violent than successful batches. If one of these barrels leaks a failed batch and the reaction is triggered, we're talking about shutting down an entire city block for weeks to clean up the fallout. Surely an outcome like that is worth avoiding by just paying for the damn metal barrels? A concerned employee. I like that he spelled the damn like a, uh, a dam to hold up a lake. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay. So we got a big chunk of the Abraxadine yard right here. We got another building that's building E on my map. Uh, why don't we go ahead and head this way? So yeah, 31148 was eating through plastic barrels and metal tank cars. So this is some nasty stuff. And like he was saying, it's not just the waste product from producing 31148. It's also failed batches of 31148 that are in these waste containers and that they were trying to ship out. So, okay, another man here with a couple cigarettes. Okay, and we're starting to see... Oh, let me take care of these fanatics real quick. Okay, the fanatics have been dealt with, but as I was saying, the uh, structure here, we're starting to get a view of the trench. These uh, This collapsed structure right here is the first sign of it that we're really seeing. Another dead worker here beside the forklift. Looks like he was moving around this dumpster at the time of the bombs. Okay. Go ahead and head back over this way. And we're going to head into building E right here. Oh, another rad roach. And we have another copy of the office pranks memo. This is copy number two. Copy number one found within building E. Okay. So we got a warehouse area here. And more of the warehouse area that has collapsed down. That's another entire area through that door over there. And we're not going to go through there just yet. Okay. Heading back up over here. We can go into this area, which is another part of that yard. This is where we came out of building D over there. And let's just take a look around this area real quick. So we got a ramp to a blocked door, some stairs, another ramp to another blocked door. And there's uh, someone was eating lunch over here, it looks like, or had, was planning on eating lunch because it was like 9 in the morning. And then up here we have a uh, painter, looks like. What exactly he was painting, I don't know. But uh, we can head over here. You can jump up inside the back of this truck. There's some ammunition. There's some junk. And some more ammunition. Okay. Alright, we uh, will leave the rest of the yard. I mean, there's nothing really to see right here other than this truck, which is somehow still burning 26 years or up to 27 years after the bombs. And let's go ahead and head back into building E. Okay, another hazmat suit. Let's go ahead and head into this part of the structure where we have the first of the janitor notes. The folks in manufacturing started storing barrels of something foul in my part of the building. Heard them say it was leftovers from some experimental drain cleaner. I can never keep track of these product ID numbers they make everyone use. This stuff makes my eyes water just being in the room with it. it used to just be I sweep floors and maybe clean up a spill now and then. Now I gotta wear a damn hazmat suit just to do my job. They better find somewhere else to put this crud, or there's not going to be any floor left for me to sweep. Okay. And right on over here, we have Janitor's Note 2. Looks like old Michael's prayers were answered. They started removing the barrels from the warehouse. I have no idea where they're taking them, but that's not my problem. I have mountains of leaked goo to clean up in the meantime. Okay. And uh, real quick, we can take a look out here. There's the warehouse over there. We got a lead-acid battery there. And not really too much else to see. You can see that there used to be an elevator right here. And we can take a look in from the side and you can see the old elevator shaft. Anyway, let's head back up into this area where we got the janitor's notes. And let's head down and into this part of the structure, which is just not doing well at all. There's also a door here that leads back out into that same yard. There's the truck that's still burning 27 years after the bombs. There's Danilo over there. And we can head right up over here. Climb this ramp. And there's a sledgehammer. Okay. Heading back down. Let's head back into building E. This is a laboratory building. Okay. So we got this little hallway section over here. Then we've also got this laboratory here. And then through here, there's another laboratory here. And right back here, we have, I'm assuming, another laboratory as well. Although, maybe just a storage area. Anyway. Back into the hallway. Again, there's that collapsed area. And we have janitor note three right here. As a janitor, nobody notices you, so you hear things in passing. 
Today I heard that Edgar Clement is getting the sack. Story got out saying we've apparently been illegally dumping barrels. Guess that explains why I haven't seen a barrel of waste in my warehouse in weeks. Supposedly Corp will be bringing in a new director of operations to turn things around. If that means finally getting me the new floor buffer I've been begging for, you won't hear me complaining. Yeah, I don't think they were doing anything about that. <laughs> uh, we'll see very soon exactly the nature of what was going on with those barrels. There's another elevator shaft right there. And again, we can walk out here. And again, there's Danilo. And beyond him, the tunnel that leads back to the Pittsburgh Union rail, light, rail yard. Okay. Let's check out what else there is to see in building E. We got this safe storage room here. Level 1 gate. Or I can just jump over it. And back here, we have a safe. This is a level 3 safe. And then we have this scientist here dead by these barrels. Jumping back over. Okay. We have another terminal here. Database terminal. Okay, there's really not too much to see on this terminal because the making a query system is broken. But we can see the database search history. Okay, so February 24th, 2104, and then we've got March 2nd. But uh, all these t terminal entries from around the same time period. Union corpses are trog meat. Zero results found. Kim's, 99.99 plus results found. Kim's that get you real high. Zero results found. Kim's that get you high. Zero results found. Kim's high. Zero results found. Party Kims, zero results found. Make Kims, 596 results found. How to make Kims, 108 results found. How to make Party Kims, zero results found. I'm going to toss this terminal out a damn window. Three results. <laughs> I like that there are three results to be found on that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and head in here. Uh, actually, no. Sorry, we missed one note, which is the chemist note. I thought I had a lead on a neutralizer for the waste. I worked late to follow it, but turned out just to be another dead end. On my way out, I saw a crew in hazmat suits wheeling dozens of barrels to the back. It's no secret that the complex has been neglected by corporate and management for a long time now, but are we really resorting to dumping the waste from 31148 in our own backyard? I'd draft an incident report and send it to corporate, but I have no doubt it'd fall on deaf ears. Maybe my time is better sent drafting my resignation. Well, didn't really matter. The, bo the bombs came before I did that. Okay, we got another note here. Another copy of the Office Pranks memo. This is the third and final copy, the second copy found here within Building E. We also have Mission Critical is a Joke. We're being expected to pull insane hours to handle this Mission Critical task, but we aren't even given the equipment to do our research. We lost another vat to corrosion yesterday, and I had to use a Nuka-Cola bottle in lieu of a graduated cylinder. If they really cared about this neutralizer so bad, maybe they'd bother to give us the most basic tools we need to do our job. This level of mismanagement is inexcusable. I bet the folks at Hallucigen don't have to put up with this nonsense. Of course, the folks at Hallucigen had other things to worry about up in Boston. Okay, right over here. Actually, that's uh, Janitor's Note 3. And, uh, okay, if we come over this way. There we go. We have Product ID Cheat Sheet. Here's a list of the product IDs for your research projects. Don't forget to enter these when doing your daily logs or Clark's going to give you hell. Names will not be finalized until the products get approved and they've had a pass done by marketing, so stick to referring to them by their PIDs. 31123, Prank Cyanide Tablets. 31140, Rodent Mace. 31148, Industrial Grade Drain Cleaner. So that is what it is that we're having to worry about here. The waste from that and improperly made batches of this industrial grade drain cleaner are what have been destroying the train cars, destroying the barrels, and creating the trench, as we'll see soon enough. Chemical lab kits for kids is 31177, and 31162 is glow-in-the-dark hairspray. That is the hairspray that was used in a prank on Margaret, which resulted in her having to get a wig and apparently having surgical scars after visiting the hospital. So I don't think that one was ready for prime time yet. Okay, and there is one more terminal here. Research terminal. And this is where we get into really why things got so bad out here. Because it wasn't just them dumping the barrels of waste out back. It's the way the waste behaves. Okay, we failed to recover 792 logs. We've got the two final ones, I assume. 793. Attempts to neutralize waste generated by PID 31148 continue to prove unsuccessful. Gregory had the idea of using radiation to trigger a reaction to neutralize the waste. 
Upon exposure, however, a massive exothermic reaction occurred and the waste began to grow massively in size. We've recorded our results and are moving on to other leads, though we're quickly running out of ideas. We've already called in Michael to clean up the mess. However, we should consider hiring more qualified cleaning staff. He's great at cleaning toilets, but I don't think hazardous waste disposal is in his job description. James Clark, Head of Project Research. And Log 794. Attempts to neutralize the waste generated by PID 31148 continue to prove unsuccessful. Nothing seems to work. Even attempting to dilute small samples in a base merely causes it to slowly expand over time. Meanwhile, Team B continues to find ways to safely contain it in the event Team A fails to find a solution. This will be day 300 of me requesting we cease production of the product immediately until we get this 3 to 1 waste to product ratio under control. I sincerely hope it won't become 301 days. James Clark, Head of Product Research. So for at least 300 days they were producing a product that had 3 to 1 waste to product ratio in terms of production. They had no way to neutralize the waste. The waste was able to eat through metal train cars and plastic tanks, or plastic barrels. I mean, what were they thinking? <laughs> and then along with that, every attempt to neutralize it with radiation simply made it grow. Every attempt to dilute it made it grow. And so you can imagine that with barrels of this stuff being dumped in the backyard of this facility, combined with the radiation of the bombs on the day, on the day of the end of the world, you end up with the trench. And so why don't we go ahead? We're not going to go into it just here. We're going to go past Danilo again. And we're going to go inspect the train tunnels. This will be the last part of the Pittsburgh Union Trail, uh, sorry, Pittsburgh Union Rail Yard that we see. Oh, another rad rush there. And there's some, a lot of radiation here. I'm going to slip on my Chinese stealth armor. Uh, or, you know, if you want to use a hazmat suit. Heck, I'll use my hazmat suit. Let me find that real quick. There it is. <laughs> Got my patriotic hazmat suit. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, head over here. Okay, so you can see this product eating through the train car right here. This is a, presumably how Abraxadine was dumping the chemical. We got a collapsed train tunnel here. We'll see the other side of that in just a little while. Now if we come over here, missile launcher and a harpoon. I'm not, I think they made a mistake there. <laughs> I mean, I've seen that as missiles before. It's kind of odd that they allow a missile launcher and something other than missiles to spawn in. Anyway, right over here, we have labor yard openings. We've got some openings in the labor yard since the sanctum keeps burning through the good ones. I know you're on recon duty, but if you spot folks leaving the train yard by themselves, corner them and slap them with a collar. Then drag them over to me, they'll kick and scream a bunch, but that'll stop eventually. So, that is the first note that we found from the fanatics. And this, I think, is actually the first post-war note that we found. Okay. Yep, there's another one. Okay. And here we go, another pre-war worker with his beer. Okay. That train tunnel has collapsed, but if we follow this train tunnel up to the north, then, oh, and there's also a, ra a uh, mole rat somewhere in here. There it is. Okay. Uh, we come to the west now, and there's the Pittsburgh Union rail yard. Okay. Here's the other tunnel that goes straight east, and we're getting into the trench. Huh. <laughs> There you go. That is ground level up there. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to see our first trogs. These are people that have been mutated by the unique combination of radiation and crazy contaminants that can be found here within Pittsburgh. Now, I don't know if that's exclusively the Abraxadine stuff, because we know that there are trogs in Fallout 3 as well, and that takes place like 100 years after this, 200 years after this, actually. So, yeah, um, <laughs> well, not 200, but nearly 200 years after this. And so the fact that there are still trogs means it's probably not what Abraxadine did. we got a dead Union fighter there. This appears to be a Union graveyard. And my assumption is that this was at one point a Union outpost here, watching the entrance to the trench until they pulled back to the rail yard itself. We've got defensive positions. If we come back over here, we can drop down. You can see where they, sorry, there we go. Where they've got a tinker's workbench and a note that hazmat is required past this point. They got a hazmat suit there, right away, some junk. Let's go ahead and head down here. 
Okay, this is another little part of the watch post. And there's the final gate over there. Some ammo there. Uh, let's check out the interior of the train where we got some dead soldiers and the equipment that they were hauling. Okay, and again, like I was saying early in the video, this is probably part of the same rail... Uh, it's probably part of the same train that we found up there in the rail yard. Okay, so along with that, there's this train car that's coming out of the wall here. This is what remains of the tunnel. You can see that the tunnel itself was underground and it was unearthed by the creation of the trench. Okay, let's go ahead and head down here. Okay. And this water is really radioactive, so I highly recommend you wear a hazmat suit. Or, again, Chinese stealth armor, power armor, whatever it is used to block the radiation. Okay, so there's a, an area off over in that direction. And uh, you know what? We're going to actually check it out. This is uh, like a, it's a big tank yard. I think this is where they were dumping the waste, and we'll see why I think that's the case here in just a minute. Got this truck here lost in this. It's probably, well, I don't know, I'm on a highway up there at some point. Um, anyway, this whole, all of this fell. So that's the crazy thing. This stuff wasn't underground. This was all stuff that was up there at surface level that eventually dropped when the industrial grade drain cleaner waste and the improperly made industrial grade drain cleaner eroded away the ground. Okay, so we got some fanatics here. I'm going to take care of them real quick. Okay, so the fanatics have been dealt with. Let's check this place out. Uh, first of all, actually, if we head back up here, and it's not just jumping, you can walk around <laughs> to get up here. We've got uh, an old fence here that was surely surrounding the property before it ended up like this. And you can see old sewer lines. <laughs> Even see some water dripping in there, which of course is only making the problem worse when you consider all the waste is, uh, while it's diluted, it also increases its size over time. We got some more uh, Rataway, Radax, and ha another hazmat suit. More Rataway, more junk. Okay, not too much to see over here other than, uh, you know, these couple containers. All right. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, you could walk around the truck and then we can head up onto this tank. Okay, another container there behind that guy. And right up here, we have a spot where they were both burning corpses and cooking hot dogs. Multitasking. Okay. Coming back over here. Dead laborers. And another way back down into the tank area. But we're going to go ahead and head over here. Past this waterfall. And this little crevice. And we got an another tank storage area here. Or barrel storage, I mean. And we have a little warehouse here with a note. Let's check it out. Waste storage memo. Revision to waste storage policy. Due to financial circumstances out of our control, metal waste barrels will be unavailable to us going forward. Plastic barrels will be used in the meantime. In the event of corrosive wastes damaging the integrity of the container, efforts should be taken to reseal the container instead of retrieving a new one. Application of adhesive tape and wonder glue is the current recommended solution. Questions or concerns about the new barrels can be left with Sydney, and they'll make sure to get to my desk, Edgar Clemen. This must have been written before he was uh, sacked for the improper waste disposal. And, uh, I mean, you can see these are all metal barrels, so I'm not sure where the... Oh, there's a plastic one. There's a couple more plastic ones. But the idea that they were... The barrels were corroding, and they were like, Oh, you know what? Well, just put some duct tape on that. There's some more plastic barrels. Okay. So yeah, all of this is the product of them improperly dumping industrial waste that was then also reactive with radiation that caused it to grow in, in volume. And it just continued to eat out the earth here. Okay, we got this tunnel here. This old sewer tunnel, which leads over here. And we got some trogs. There's another one. I thought there were at least three. There they are. Okay. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. So that chemical waste, that's part of a quest here. But, uh, let's go ahead and head back up this way. And really what we got over here, we just came out of that tunnel, is just a pool of water and assuming, and I assume some of that waste. Now if we head up this way, 
Get in through this canyon. Oh. Mole rats. And here we are, back at that truck. Back at the, the canyon that goes over to that uh, large tank and the warehouse with all the plastic barrels. Okay, back up this canyon, past the dead mole rat. Do wish little tiny ledges wouldn't stop you from running. <laughs> anyway, though. Okay, we are about to pass the first holotape here. We got another rail line here, and you'll see why this is here in just a second. Now, this is actually the second holotape in a series that's up there on that train car. We'll get to that in a minute. But there you are. There's the other end of that collapsed rail tunnel I pointed to near Danilo. <laughs> okay, so heading down through this canyon, heading south. Gonna find another trog. But climbing these little ledges. Get up here. And it looks like I have... Uh, not respond since I last picked it up. So, I will go ahead and play it for you anyway. This is Runner's Log 1, Career Change. This is Bella Gerber, Union Runner. I used to run supplies between Union outposts. Now, I run civilians to places they might survive. People are fleeing their homes to get away from the fanatics. Finding themselves in dangerous places they don't recognize anymore. Places like the Trench, I kept encountering them on my runs. People trapped under fallen rubble, broken families, lost wanderers, wasting away. I thought, these people need shelter more than the 42 needs bullets. So I started taking them with me to the Sanctum. The last bastion of hope we have in this awful, gaping chasm. Okay. Again, that's uh, tape number one. Tape number two probably also won't be something that's respawned yet, but I can play it for you when we get over to where you find it. Another rad roach. Typically, it's found right here on top of these cinder blocks, but again, runner's log two, white lies. Ella Gerber, Union Runner. Continuing my self-appointed route between the Sanctum and the Trench. It's getting harder to navigate. The terrain changes every day. If something happens to me, I worry that the people sheltered here will be stranded. I need to get back to headquarters and update someone on what's happening here. But at this point, I don't know if I can find my way back. Today a little boy asked me if he would ever get to go back home. I didn't have the heart to tell him that I, that his home, probably doesn't exist anymore. That I wouldn't be able to guide him there, even if it did. All I could do was smile and promise that we'd take care of him here. At the sanctum. Okay, so like she was saying there, this is constantly still changing though. The waste is still active, <laughs> eroding away this entire area, creating a canyon in a uh, really rapid time when you consider how long it takes canyons to form normally. Okay, we're gonna head up through this wrecked container into this yard where there are more mole rats. Okay, got another little outpost here. I think this was once part of uh, Union territory where they watched the trench. Got a ham radio, some uh, beers there. If we head up over this way, past these ramps, and head up here. You can see a spot where there was a laborer here with the missile launchers and a bunch of grenades watching the trench as well. So we're back to the outside of the Abraxadine complex. Heading through this, we get into this area, where again, there's building E collapsing away in front of us. You can walk through here, climb this ruined staircase, and if we head right back up here, once again, there's Danilo, and beyond him, the Pittsburgh Union Rail Yard. Okay. So, instead of uh, us going back out that way, we're going to follow these stairs up and go through this door right here on the left. We've got a little office here, some file cabinets, an old broken computer. And on the other side, we have this large area controlled by the fanatics. I'm going to kill these guys and we'll take a look. Okay, here we are. Now, you can see a little bit of the city back there, cranes and stuff like that. Now, the fact that these large hydraulic jacks are here means that this collapse was taking place before the war, because there's no other reason they would have set this stuff up 
in order to try to hold this building up. Just kind of crazy to consider that maybe this maybe this is why they had that guy get fired. <laughs> Edgar Clement, I mean. Now if we head over here, you got this area that goes up. We're right back up to building E. There's the warehouse area. Okay. So we're not in the laboratory area. That's over there. But let's go ahead and head back down through here. Okay. So we'll go around the structure first. Right here we got this little spot. I'm not sure what these uh, tick marks are supposed to indicate. But we also got some ammo and a gun, so maybe a sniper was uh, marking his kills. Got a little bit of radiation medication right there. Continuing around, we got a tunnel. We'll go through that in just a minute here. We got uh, some ammo. Another one of those uh, spots to watch the area. Got a bridge over a gate. Okay. And that also heads off down the trench where we got some folks that have been hung. Heading up this way, we got this locked area. And this is where I found a couple collectibles. Uh, there's also a safe right here. And I found a power armor chassis right here before. Now, <laughs> right over here we have a note. The Hellcats new assignment. So if you don't remember from the Foundry, well really the Hellcats are a mercenary group. They, uh, the first time we saw them in Fallout 76 was during the Brotherhood of Steel questline in uh, Broken Steel or uh, Steel Rain, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, we have the Hellcats new assignment. Uh, we also saw them in the Foundry, or saw notes about them in the Foundry. They were hired by the Fanatics in order to fight the Union. Survival comes first, and mercenary work is a great way to stay off the losing side, but that's not going to stop me from complaining about how these Fanatics do things. They hired us on a few weeks ago. Seems they needed some extra guns to finish securing their hold on the pit. But this just looks like chaos and tyranny more than any type of control. They have us storm into Union bases, kill everyone in sight, and then move on to the next without so much as stopping to loot the wreckage. Last time, one of those assholes accidentally shot Hoffman in the leg during the assault. Couldn't tell friend from foe. There's been talk of leaving this place after our stint with the Fanatics is done. Finding work somewhere we could actually sleep at night wouldn't be a bad call. But me? I prefer to know an enemy, and I've known the pit all my life. A Rhodes Hellcat Mercenary Company. Okay, more radiation meds. Got another missile launcher there, even though for some reason every time I found it, it looks like this thing's in pieces. I don't really know what to make of that. Anyway, uh, another hazmat suit there. And let's go ahead and head out here. Now we can go around more. There's where we came into this area in the first place. And we can head up this uh, old trailer. Get to this broken chunk of highway where they also were watching over the site. We got some beers and a cooler. Okay. Let's go ahead and head back down. And then we're going to cross this bridge. Got some junk in here. Some more radiation meds. A bit of fridge. Another container for some junk, some more meds, another hazmat suit, weapons workbench. Let's go upstairs. I found a recipe here before. Okay. And we keep going around here. Another hazmat suit, more radiation meds. We got another bridge here. Again, there's the way back up into building E. Okay. And now if we head back down, we can go around here and we can cross this bridge. Okay, again, there's that tunnel I pointed out earlier. There's building E falling in again. Okay, let's go ahead and just drop down in. Okay, the proper way would probably be to go through that gate over there, but, eh, whatever. Now, here we have a laborer. This is a civilian that's been captured by the fanatics. Apparently this one doesn't say anything. There we go. Anything else? There you go. Yeah, he's wearing an explosive slave collar. They probably got those things from prisons or from Chinese internment camps. The rad roach there. Okay. Not too much to see out here in the main yard. Even these little chunks of structure just host to rad roaches. But there is this spot over here. This seems to have been the laborers' quarters. You can see there's even still one here. And we can go in here, and there's another one there. That's a massive drop box. That's for a quest that you can do here for the uh, for the Union. Okay, that's uh, Building J, I believe is what I marked this as here. Okay. 
And this is building H. And the enclosed area we went into earlier is building G. Sorry, I haven't been listing those things. The warehouse that we went into where we found the note about the plastic barrels, that was building I. I also just realized, sorry, I, <laughs> I was thinking about it and I was like, where's building F? I marked building F off as, uh, well, I'll show you real quick. Uh, wrong spot. Heading back through building H. Crossing back into building E. Well, collapsed part of building E. I count that as building E, the part that's still standing. Building F is what I call this little area in here, because even though it's something of a tunnel, it's also clearly a building. So, <laughs> or really, it's just a chunk of building E, but whatever. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and head back into this area. Okay, so we've now pretty much covered this area. There's a pickaxe there. And let's go ahead and head back through here. We're going to go through this part of the trench. Another dead uh, laborer there with an axe in the back. Got some more water. Little makeshift bridge. More mole rats. And if we head up here, there's a tunnel. Let's go into this tunnel. Okay, we're in some sort of uh, storm sewer or just sewer. And if we come over here, this is a tunnel into the sanctum. We're not going to go in there just yet. More hazmat suits, more radiation uh, meds. If we come through this tunnel... First of all, there's a trog in here that retreats. And if we come over here, past these can chimes, we're back out here in this uh, this yard overlooking uh, building H, again, building J down there, building G over there, and the remains of building E over there. Okay, going through here again, not going into Sanctum just yet. We've got a little bit more of the trench to, ex to uh, explore. You can see that it's eroding out the area under the highways. <laughs> okay. Coming down here, we got some fanatic turrets. Now, and some fanatics. Now, we could just kill them all, all the turrets, or we could turn them. Okay, turret control. Remove targeting restrictions. For all I know, they're just killing each other. But I would hope that they would kill some trogs and some fanatics. Anyway, uh, right over here, we got another safe and a couple of uh, <laughs> teddy bears playing chess. Or checkers, I guess. You know what? I think they are just targeting each other, or possibly even me, so why don't we just go ahead and turn them off. Okay. Let's head up this ramp here. Alright, we are overlooking one of the last big open areas here in the pit. It's not the last one, but it is one of the last. This kind of thing does not make any sense. It looks really cool, but the odds of this truck actually staying up here... <laughs> basically non-existent because we got chunks of a highway that originally ran from over there over the there <laughs> first of all these columns don't even match the other ones but uh, second of all the odds that the trucks would actually stay up here again basically non-existent anyway we got more trogs Okay. We got another tunnel over here. Or not another tunnel. A uh, chasm over here. Chasm leads up this way. More mole rats. And beyond this, we have the outskirts of building E again. There's That's where that uh, laborer is with the missile launcher. Okay. It also goes up this way. And there's a safe. And along with that safe, you can also find that's the, where the holotape was, the first holotape we listened to, holotape one of the runner's log. Uh, real quick, we're going to check this out over here. More rad roaches. And we have Jackson Reed, including who has his note, Minus. A few days ago, I fell through the ground. 
Everything deteriorated so fast. The streets emptied, buildings crumbled. There was a stench in the air, like cleaning chemicals and sulfur. I woke up choking on it in the middle of an earthquake. Then I fell back through my bed like you do in nightmares, except for it was real, and I landed in a pool of acid. Clawed my way out like I was on fire. Everything's been dark since then. I got it in my eyes. I've been going in circles. I tried to climb the walls. I wonder how close I got to the top. If I was only one more handhold away or 50. Now I'm hearing things. Screams that sound human, but not. I'm so thirsty. Bet you these are my last words. I hope they're legible. Let it be known that I'm Jackson Reed, and in life, I had a best friend named Morley. I'm sorry I left you, buddy. I'm sorry. So yeah, everything here collapsed very quickly. He was blinded and attempted to find his way out, but... Okay, Fanatics and Fanatic Protectrons and Fanatic Turrets. One of the last large... In fact, this is the last large open area here. Okay. You can head up here, up this ramp. Got another terminal here, but it's only to control turrets. Like that one. And the one we already destroyed. We got this gate. Oh yeah. Uh, collectible nodes. Should have mentioned this earlier. There's only a few. Wood piles. There's also this Radstag buck. And there's also a Radstag doe in this area as well. Coming over this way. Following this up. We're back in that pool where that tunnel takes us back over to the plastic tank yard. I don't know, tr another truck there. Uh, coming back up over this way. It leads us back to holotape number two right there. And again, back up that way leads us to the rail yard. Okay. So heading south again. We can enter this part of the, of the uh, trench. Another fanatic controlled section. Okay. We can head up this old ramp created by a destroyed road. Head up over here. And you can see entire chunks just fell, including like chunks of the sidewalk with street lights. Hazmat suit, more radiation medication. Shooting position. Okay. Now, we actually have uh, two tunnels off of this. There's that one right there. And then, if we head back down here, past this cooking station, there's beer and some water and some food. There's the Radstag dough I was talking about. We can head up this way. That's where we found Jackson Reed. And if we head up this way, there's a second tunnel. Now, there's also a turret and a generator and uh, some dead trogs. More can chimes. And here we are on the opposite end of the two trucks field here. Uh, we got the uh, weapons workbench here, some ammunition, a minigun. Coming around here, we have a spot where I found a fusion core before. And in fact, I've also found a fusion core in building G. Sorry, I forgot to mention that before. Uh, but I also found one over here. And we have safe haven. Dear Mason, if you can make it through to the... If you can make it through the trench, safe haven can be found at the Sanctum. Look for the cathedral. This is one of the few places where we're still safe from the fanatics. See you soon, Ella. So that part was written by a member of the Union or a civilian. Then at the bottom we have a note added by a fanatic. Found this lead to another Union safe house. Hard to reach, but the location itself is poorly guarded and contains a good store of food and medical supplies. Maybe three dozen survivors and residents. Please advise D. Okay. So we got uh, some dead fanatics. Well, a dead fanatic that I killed. <laughs> and some more loot. Actually, this one was already dead. If I'm Yeah, that one was already dead. Uh, there's a few ones that were already dead over here, killed by trogs. And you can also generally find their weapons in their hands. Dead trog on the couch for some reason. Okay. Some more junk. Alright. Let's uh, head down here. We can also jump up onto this one, oh, just as we did the other one, just so you can see what we got up here. Just a ruined a truck. Okay. Now then, we could either head into this next area through that. Oh, sounds like there's another trog. There we go. Or we can head up over here through this. 
And we've reached a Union safe house, or a safe point, outpost, whatever you want to call it. Got a waterfall falling through. There's the uh, little chasm that comes in through here. Weapons workbench. We got a cooking station. This is a friendly dog, regardless of uh, how it sounded. Hey, it's Morley! Jackson's old bud. So, uh, we got uh, some junk, some food. And we've got three notes over here, all of them belonging to this lady, Ava Rose. We got Ava's journal number one. Once more I've been led to salvation. So many I had to leave behind. So many innocent lives laid to waste by the misguided. The city crumbles all around me, yet it is still my home. And the people left behind are my neighbors. I will stay and guide who I can to the same salvation I was granted. I pray for the strength need I pray for the strength I need to guide them. If I cannot find it within my own aging body, let me work through my words, through my hope. There are those I may still influence. I pray that they are sent along my path. We also have note two. Or sorry, journal three right there. Journal two right here. These lost lambs have answered my prayers. A feral child born in the chasm. A chemist from the factory driven close to madness after the earth opened up and spilled her own creation upon her. A runaway fanatic in repentance. The child and chemist offered each of them to share in my shelter. On the first day, they wouldn't approach each other. I was surprised on the second day to find them sharing the food they'd each scavenged. On day three, they were gone. Two souls who each believed themselves monsters, yet they found humanity in each other. The fanatic, he lingers, always just out of eyesight, taking only what he needs. But among needs, there is more than just the physical. With time, maybe I can teach him. Okay, and hollow, sorry, <laughs> journal number three. The runaway tracker, for it is no longer right to define him by his past, he still lingers away from the light. He accepts my gifts now. He accepts my gifts now. I can only hope that it means his heart is opening. He seeks purpose, a new role in the desolate city, but he does not believe himself worthy. Even if he cannot find it in himself to forgive his past mistakes, he must give himself permission to take a step forward. One step, and then another. Each day brings new light, new challenges, new opportunities. Perhaps one day he will look back and find his past self is but a distant shadow, a healed scar on the inevitable horizon. Yeah, Ava's a good person. She's constantly trying to find the good in people and bring it out. Anyway, though, let's go ahead and head into this tunnel back here. Which brings us into this room with another tunnel to the Sanctum. Now, we could also head back over here where there are three more hazmat suits and more uh, ra radiation meds. Coming back out here, we're in that last fanatic area. Where again, there's the uh, Radstag Doe, the cooking station, the other Radstag Stag over there. A Radstag Buck, I mean. Okay. So, we're not going to go in this way, we're going to go in the other one. So, in order to get to that, we're going to go back through this tunnel. Back through the uh, Union Outpost here. In fact, we're going to drop down through here, walk through the water. Come up this way. We could have easily gone in the other one. In the other entrance. I wanted to go in this way because I wanted to present this location in this manner. We'll go through this gate. Back up through this tunnel. And we'll head in there. Now, we will do that in just a minute. But before we do that, I need to go talk to Danilo. Because there's part of the Sanctum, like I said earlier, we cannot access without doing the quest. But I'm not going to show you the quest because, again, it's not necessary. And it would lengthen the video f to make it far longer than it's already going to be. So... I will bring you back when I have done that. Okay, so I've helped Danilo. He's now going to let us into the cathedral section of the Sanctum once we go in there. Uh, so let's go on and head in. Okay. Now, uh, at some point in the future, I'm going to turn the music down a little bit uh, and turn the background sound up. But we can start to be, be, hear a little bit the uh, organ music playing from the cathedral. And it's uh, the same music that you can hear at... Um, Haven Church in the Mire. So let's check out this area here. Now this door was closed when I first showed up. I did come in here, kill some trogs and stuff, make sure that we can progress all the way to the cathedral without having to worry about the quest in here. So this room right here, if we uh, head in here, we can head down these stairs. There are a couple of uh, tripwire traps. Keep, keep that in mind. Not here. This door is locked when you first show up. But that, there's a tripwire right there. There's a tripwire on this door. 
And if we come over here, there is also this trap right here. And these control the Tesla arc traps that are on the walls around this room. There's another one right there. A lot of those. Okay, so keep that in mind. If we look around here, we've got a mining hat right there. Along with that, a couple lunch boxes. Got some equipment, some junk. Heading down this way past that junk. We got a weapons workbench, more junk, containers of junk and junk, more junk, and we have a note. Goodbye, Cliffy. Tonight we're gathered here to say goodbye to old Cliffy. You tried to get away and that just broke our hearts. Sad face. Nearly got away too, didn't you? Emphasis on nearly. That's okay, you're back with us now. Happy face. I'd ask if you have any last words, but I doubt you can speak with your jaw looking like that. Pause for reaction. Anyway, goodbye, Cliffy. Remember to flip switch. Now, the switch he's talking about is on the electric chair that they've set up, hooked up to this generator with the core permanently attached to it. Now, if we open up the circuit breaker here, you can see this was a, basically a show. And apparently, Cliffy was sitting there in that chair, and the chair is on. Okay. Now, next to it, I assume we have what Cliffy was in before, and it appears that he was beaten with a pipe wrench. That's probably what happened to his jaw. Anyway, over here we got more junk and containers of junk. This door here opens up to this landing. We got a tree growing over there. We'll look at all that stuff in a minute. Coming over here, another tripwire trap, note that. And on the walls in here, more Tesla arc traps. These ones have not been uh, tripped yet. So. And along with that, we have some cages, and uh, there's even a laborer back there who's uh, still praying. Looks like we got uh, some potatoes that have been tossed in there, and a spot for people to eat. And here we go, another note. Tonight's entertainment. Tonight's entertainment, puppet show featuring Jesse and the Rotten Head, Romeo and Juliet, one man reimagining featuring Roscoe, surprise spelling bee featuring bees, Remember, folks, tip, please tip your entertainers. Lord knows they need it. So I assume that was uh, them, there's the bees over there, them tossing those potatoes to these people so that they could eat. There's the talking head. Yeah, okay. Uh, coming out over here, another tripwire right there. Yep, that set it off. We can go ahead and uh, finish these things off early. There we go. Okay. Now we can come over this way, that uh, the staircase is slightly broken, but it still serves as a ramp. We can come up here, another landing, little drainage ditch running down here into this sewer area. This part's full of uh, foliage. And then right here we got some water, and there's actually a dead body right down here. He's uh, wearing a prisoner collar, that's part of a quest, but they're also carrying this uh, tire iron. Looks like they were trying to climb out that way. They got the ladder right there, but they did not make it. Now, typically what would happen here is you just drop right back down there, but I'm going to jump back up, and here we are, back in the electric chair room. And if we keep going back up this way, we've arrived at the hallway, back to the tunnel that we came in, and again, the electric chair room. Okay. That door is blocked. Can't go through there. Crossing this bridge... We can check out this area over here. And this is where they were testing out uh, various methods of torture. Now we have more trip wires and more Tesla arc traps. Okay, and here's a note. Test results. Fridge, two hours. Guess these are more airtight than I thought. Coffin, six hours. One pipe insufficient. Maybe added another hole at the bottom to promote airflow. Bathtub, eight days. Think we got a winner here. The smell of damp laborer may be a bit much at times, but it gives them ample time to reconsider our offer. Now, they're talking about basically turning people over to their side. Uh, we got a dead laborer right here inside this bathtub that's been got bars bolted to the top of it, so they're trapped in there like that. Here's the coffin with a pipe in it, like they were talking about. And if we come up over here, we have the refrigerator and the explosive trap. Okay, now you, I don't know if you saw it, but there was an alarm clock sitting right next to that. There's another one here, and uh, yeah, so that was the, what they were using to time these people and their deaths. Okay, so we got this tunnel over here. We're going to follow it real quick. Oh, bear traps. Sorry about that. 
We got some bone chimes. A couple of turrets in here that I blew up. Armor workbench. And right here, <laughs> wild ride with this guy with his uh, cigar and his top hat. Okay, keep on heading this way. That's more bone chimes, more bear traps, including this one, which has a nasty chunk of leg stuck in it. And we're in a catacombs area. We're going to come back to that. There's the other bear trap. <laughs> okay. Back up through here. Alright, we're back in the sewer area. Now we can head down these stairs into this next room where there are more Tesla arc traps. This is also accessible from the testing room. Now we got uh, potentially what I'm assuming is a bathroom right here. Along with that, you got spots where they were walling people up. This guy sawed his own hand off to free himself, but apparently bled out in the process. Pretty nasty. We got a note here. Hearing things. I think I'm losing it down here. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I could have sworn I heard one of those little bastards say my name. That can't be, they're just damn monsters. Now that I think about it, it did kind of look like my old bunkmate. Screwed up face and everything. Yeah, trogs used to be people. They're not just monsters. They're basically another form of radiation and chemical ad addled uh, humans in the same way that uh, feral ghouls are. Except for feral ghouls are just radiation and genetics, I believe. Okay, down at the base level of the sewer area, we got the sewer tunnel flowing through here. And up that way as well. We got this tree growing here, fed by the light of the sun up above. And if we come over this way, this is the staircase back up. There's the electric chair room. There's the dining room where they were being entertained. And we can cross this bridge. You can see the dead trogs. This area is full of them. And we have this room here. Now, we've got more Tesla arc traps. And another cage. Some sort of torture room. And right here we have dominance. Remember, assert your dominance. They scream at you, you scream back louder. If that doesn't work, give them a good solid crack on the skull. That'll send them crawling back into their holes. Works every time on the little bastards. It's the big bastards you need to watch out for. See one of those and you better find a turret to hide behind real quick. Talking about the trogs there. Okay. Coming back in here, we got an old storage room it looks like. Maybe some computers. And a hole in the wall that leads out to this tunnel. That goes up that way. And right back out here, we have the main sewer tunnel. Now, there are a couple of flamethrower traps here. These are triggered by the trip wires that are right in front of them. I'm not exactly sure how effective these turrets would be. You'd assume that the trogs would come rushing at the gate. But anyway, we're going to come back up this way. And here we have the sign that says Sanctum and a dead laborer next to it. Okay. So, we basically just finished up the uh, sewer section. Let's go ahead and head up this way. Okay, so we've got this old cistern here. Got some fish swimming around in it. We're going to come back to that in a minute, but for now let's head down this way. And we're in another old sewer tunnel. we got uh, a couple of turrets here that I destroyed. And right up here we have a power armor workbench. And a note. Trogs. To the foreman. Mia got dragged away last night. I barely managed to shut the gate before she dragged me away with her. With all due respect, we need more security down here. We're just as vulnerable to these trogs as the prisoners are. The last three people who got assigned with me didn't survive the night. Ah, oh, crap. You're trying to get rid of me, aren't you? <laughs> okay. Uh, we got some uh, more junk. A gun. Let's head up this way. Another gate here. More dead trogs that I killed. And this gate over here is currently inaccessible. This is something that will open up later in the quest. It's a shortcut opened by Danilo when he feels that we've done the work that needs to be done. This is another tunnel back out into the pit. I'll show you where it goes. Okay. Remember those three hazmat suits and the radiation meds? If not, well, let's head back out this way. And we have that last fanatic area that we covered. With the uh, radstag doe down here next to the fire pit. And the other way it goes, heads back over to the uh, Union Outpost, but uh, I think you remember it by now, or hopefully you do at least. Anyway, let's go ahead and head back into the Sanctum. Okay. Now again, the path up to the left here is currently inaccessible, so let's go ahead and head back this way. 
Now we can go right through here, a couple of spike board traps, and back to the cistern area where we came in here just a minute ago. Okay, so there's actually, um, well, we can head up this way to get to the second floor, but uh, let's take a look at the first floor first. There's this large room beyond. We keep heading over this way. Again, another entrance to that area. And right over here we have this cell. And another note. No escape. Lost Matt last night. I told him not to go. He insisted he'd be fine since the beast had begun to leave us alone. He didn't make it far before we heard a bear trap catch his leg. His screams brought every one of the beasts down onto him. At least it was over quick. Is this why the guards stopped locking our cells? Okay. And if we head back over this way, you can see that they were playing golf here, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we can head up over here. And there's another note, and this one's going to be a little bit of an enigma until we see a little bit more of this place. Wall instructions. Listen here, you feckless swine. I'll spell it out one last time. No hands, no feet, no spines, no ribs, no hips. If I find any more of these, you'll be joining the wall. Don't ask why, just do. Okay, again, that might seem a little strange, but uh, we'll see why he's saying that here in just a minute. Okay, coming in through here, we have uh, this hole in the wall. This is where we came in. Remember the leg stuck in the bear trap? Now if we check out over here. Once again, the sanctum sign. So, back down this tunnel. We're in the catacombs again, and we got some crypts here, and another note. Hand, oh, sorry, <laughs> sealed away. How long have we been down here? Weeks? Months? At this point, I can't really tell who's worse, the fanatics or the beasts. At least it's not personal with the beasts. You don't see them sealing each other up in the walls. Okay, if you come over here. More catacombs, a fountain that looks like it's right out of the Palace of the Winding Path. This area down here that's been sealed up to prevent trogs from entering, but it doesn't really work. Okay. Over this way. We got a bunch of crypts in the walls. Got some drugs and some uh, rat poison back there. Coming around here. There again is the hole with a leg. <laughs> okay. That pretty much covers this area. And again, down here, we got those couple of tunnels that head back out to the cistern. Okay, and coming around here, we have another area with a cell. We come in here, we find a person that was walled up. Ness Myers. We tried, we did everything we could to get her out, but we just couldn't move any more of the blocks. All I could do is hold her hand until the end. Her name was Ness Myers. If anyone finds this, get out while you can before you become one of us. Pretty horrifying. Okay. It's about to light some candles back there. Back into this room. Okay. Let's uh, look at the rest of this room before we move on. Which is, we've got to go up and over. Okay, we have this last tomb right here. Now if we come... Oh, couple of bridges from this platform. One heading north, one heading south. Let's follow the south one. Now on this side, we can head back out into the cistern room. There's uh, another room over there we'll take a look at in a minute, but for now I want to show you this direction, which includes some folks that were being walled up in here, including this laborer that's still alive. Okay, let's head back over. Oh, sorry, one point. Yeah, this right down here. Again, back out to the cistern area. Okay. Let's head back up this way. And here is the wall they were talking about. It looks like they were trying to emulate the, uh, the catacomb walls in uh, Paris. And this is why they didn't want uh, hands and spines and hips. They wanted leg bones and arm bones. They wanted skulls. They were creating this. That's what the whole point was. Anyway, let's head through here and up these stairs. Again, there's the fountain. And let's head up these stairs. Okay, this is uh, across that north bridge. Another spot where someone's been walled up. We can come over this way. 
bunch of coffins. Okay, and there's Danilo. He'll open the door for us. Once I unlock this gate. Okay, there's the gate. Uh, again, I'm not going to show the quest in this case. That's uh, for another time. Another one of these tombs. Now, there's a way directly up this way that goes into the cathedral. I'll just show you that real quick. There you go. But along with that, there's other ways. This is the uh, still inaccessible gate right here. That we saw a minute ago. If we head back up this way... Oh, you know what? I just realized I completely forgot. <laughs> Hollow tape. Okay, uh, this is gonna take a second. We gotta run back through here. Well, I'm out of stamina, so we're gonna walk back through here. Gotta go through the catacombs. I've pretty much memorized this place in the process of drawing the maps. <laughs> go through here, past the bone chimes. Back into the sewer section, past the testing room. Across the bridge. And right over here, holotape three of the runner's log. Too much. I'm Bella Gerber, a runner for the Union. Or at least I used to be. To tell you the truth, I think we're alone out here. Haven't heard from headquarters in months. They haven't heard from us. The Union, we're all trying our best to help everyone. But there's just too many people to help. Too much to do. Too many hazards in the way. We're running low on supplies. I spend every daylight hour scavenging. But it's not enough. I need help. And we're not getting any. Some of the survivors volunteer to go out scavenging with me. Young ones. The last partner I had out here was boiled alive in a rat pit. If even he could... I can't let them risk their lives. Not after I promise them safety. I'm gonna start going out at night too. Maybe then I can gather enough. Forgot there's also one more note in this area. Nighttime. At night, the fanatics retreat to the cathedral. That's when the beasts come out. I think the beasts have started to learn they can't get into our cells and have mostly given up trying. Or maybe they feel bad for us. It's almost peaceful now. So, okay. Now then, we explored that entire direction. Let's head this way. And the reason I remembered holotape number three is because holotape number four is right here. Lambs to the slaughter. This is Bella Gerber. Used to be a union runner. Now I'm a prisoner. The fanatics found us. They took over the sanctum. Everyone I promised safety. I delivered them straight into the hands of the fanatics. I was so arrogant. So stupid. Forgot that I wasn't the only person capable of navigating the trench. Of learning how to navigate it. Pat always told me I needed to learn to trust others. To stop taking the weight of the world upon myself. But he's the same way. I hadn't mentioned it before. I, I have a husband, Pat Gerber. We promised to meet up after our work for the Union was done. But it will never be done, will it, Pat? Things will only get worse and worse. I don't think I'll make it out of here. But I could at least give the others a chance. The others I condemned bringing them here with the promise of safety. I have to give them a chance, Pat. This will be my final log. Goodbye. And Pat, if you ever find that monster you were looking for, don't go alone. So yeah, Pat uh, went to the foundry and is dead. Okay. Over here, this is going to be kind of creepy. <laughs> Those clapping monkeys. Okay. Let's head up these stairs. Past these. Including the sad death here of Jingles the Moon Monkey. And let's head up this way. Okay. Up these stairs. And these. And we're in the cathedral. 
All right, I'm gonna take care of some fanatics and I will bring you back. Okay, so the fanatics have been dealt with, at least temporarily. Now let's take a look around inside this cathedral. Okay, first of all, this door right back here, currently inaccessible. That will open up when I trigger another section of the quest. Uh, and I'm going to do that, and again, do that stuff off screen so that uh, you can at least see what's going on back in that room. There's a terminal back there we need to read. We've got some guns, some ammo, an armor workbench, some junk. Coming up this way, we have uh, a room with a... Well, it's like, it's a, basically it's off the main hall here. we got a foosball table full of little uh, <laughs> vault boys and vault girls. Uh, we got a magazine right here. Okay, this is the first magazine that I found. Alright. Uh, I'll add that to the collectibles list. We got some more junk. Coming over this way, we have another inaccessible door. And behind it, fanatic hopefuls. These are uh, basically laborers and members of the union that have been brainwashed and are trying to actually join the fanatics. Now, this door is technically not something that you could normally open, but because I can jump stupidly high, I can go over it. And there's another you note right wait. here. This will open up in a little while anyway, but uh, for now, let's go ahead and read this note. A few more days. Just a few more days. At least that's what I keep telling myself. These guys may be crazy, but what other options do I have? All I gotta do is keep my head down and do what they say. The sooner the others realize that, the sooner they'll be up here too. I'm worried about my cellmates. They seemed excited about joining. Who would actually want to treat other living beings like this? Just a few more days, then maybe I'll be able to help the others. So yeah, we got folks here that are joining. Some of them for good reasons, some of them for bad. But overall, it's a bad thing to join. Okay, so that covers this area. Now we can go through this door into this uh, bathroom here, where they're burying mannequins and teddy bears and toilets with cement. I don't know exactly why. Uh, and they've also filled all the uh, all the urinals with candles. Here's the uh, the way back down into the catacombs that I pointed out earlier. We're in the other end of the cathedral here. Now you can up, see up towards the altar there. Now we can head over this way and check out the priest's quarters. We got a gun and some ammunition. Got some uh, another safe here, another level three safe. Now if we check out this, we got a note, priest's letter. Brother Sherman, I hope this letter finds you well. However, I'm in dire need of your help. I should have known better than to do business with those goons. The church needed money, and they offered a way out. Said they'd leave us more than enough to keep the doors open, but now they're leaving us with nothing. I pleaded with her boss, but he laughed and said, I should start offering tours of those spooky catacombs of ours. Have they no respect for the dead? Please, I need your advice. I didn't join the priesthood for money, I just wanted to spread the good word. Regards, Brother Michael. Okay. Let's see, nothing else to show there. Let's head out towards the altar itself, where they've broken a statue and put it back together. And, uh, kind of reminds me of that uh, painting of Kronos eating his young. But, uh, anyway, there's the altar with a bottle of wine and a burnt book. And we've got some uh, laborers that are in these stocks. We can free them. And they will run off. Okay, camera there. Coming around here. Got this little stage here for beheadings. That's back towards the uh, fanatic hopefuls. Okay, so that covers this floor. So why don't we go ahead and start heading up. Heading up these stairs come up onto this landing where the floor is heavily broken out and they've got some uh, iron maidens made out of Pulowski preservation shelters and uh, that one was trapped <laughs> anyway coming around this way we got a cooking station here we cross this little bridge got a bedroom okay and we have a cage here, I'm assuming for cage matches. Okay, here's the pipe, pipe organ. I'll do this uh, event off uh, off camera here in just a minute. But if we come through here, we have uh, the vestry. We've got the, the place where the church staff was working on raising money. Let's go ahead and... Here we go. Memo to team. 
Team. As you may know, donations have been down across the board. We're going to try something different this month by instituting quotas. Each of you will now be responsible for soliciting at least $155,000 for the month of October. In the event you are unable to meet your quota for the month, you will be asked to volunteer elsewhere. Thank you for your understanding, and remember the top contributor will receive a $300 gift card to Slocum's Joe. So, uh, if you don't remember, inflation's kind of crazy in the Fallout universe. I mean, it's not really all that crazy. We're considering something that is now, what, 50-something years in the future. So, 155000 is not 155000 in today's dollars. A, Slocum, a dozen donuts to Slocum's Joe, for example, I think is like 30 bucks. so... Anyway, uh, right up here we got their uh, totals, and it looks like Pammy was not going to be making it, but Allie and Petey were doing great. So, okay, and right back here we have another note, top donors. Top donors for September. Anonymous, $820,000. Finnegan Family, $680,000. A. Aaron, or A. Aaron, 249000 uh, John Smith, 249000 J. Doe, 249000 Patricia Joy, uh, 32,972. A and N Construction, 118,000. Tom and Mary Webley, 85,001 dollars. One more dollar than R and J Roberts. Uh, Soup and Suds Bar, 75,000 dollars. It's interesting that they've got those uh, 249,000, and they're all uh, kind of anonymous names, uh, right under a quarter million. You gotta wonder if there's some sort of uh, scheme there to avoid uh, notice. By the government? Anyway. Uh, but did I read that? Yeah, read that. Okay. Coming through here. Got a little sitting area and another note. Bad omens. Things remain peaceful here while the chasm surrounding the cathedral grows wider and deeper. Supply runs are becoming more and more dangerous. An illness is going around. If it weren't for the air, it wouldn't be so bad. Olivia almost stopped breathing last night. It was just after I saw a shadow outside the window. It looked like a person. Maybe it was nothing. We can't afford to have the fanatics find us now. I pray our safe haven remains as such for as long as the Lord will grant us mercy. Okay, we've got a nuka cola there on the table. A couple of refrigerators. Let's see if there's anything in them this time. Nope. All right. Back in here, the floor is broken out. And that, uh, there's a mannequin down there somewhere that fell off that one. This woman is up here. Let me just knock her right off. Okay. No. And we got the infirmary back here. Got some junk. Some bodies. Well, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> or at least some shapes and in some sheets. Chemistry workbench, tinkerer's workbench. Some junk, some containers of junk. Right over here. I don't exactly know what this was supposed to be. Some sort of gift shop, maybe? Okay. Alright, I'm gonna do the, uh, the event here off camera, and then we'll come back when it's done. Okay, that's been dealt with. There's still one more fanatic and some fanatic hopefuls to take care of, but that'll open up the door to the last terminal. So they're still locked in there, but if we come this way... Fanatic Foreman. Okay. They've been dealt with. Make your way back out to the trench. The faster the better. Okay. Uh, right here we have the industrial trunk for the location. Got some ammo and some food there. And the last terminal, Foreman's terminal. Foreman's log one. Raided the cathedral this morning to hardly any resistance. The Unioners little safe house was full of weak and sickly civilians. They were counting on the trench to protect them. But thanks to that new tracker, our whole group got through this rad pit without a hitch. We've got rotating guards on the prisoners while we build a pin for them. I keep hearing them praying. They don't know yet that no god can save them from what I have planned. Foreman's Log 2. We drove back the trogs and started building cages underground. But the beasts just keep crawling out of new holes. I'm starting to think we leave them be. Make for a little extra security down there. And a convenient way to dispose of underlings who are more of a pain than they're worth. It's not like I ever need to go down there. I'm the god of this temple now. That's right, I'm in charge here. I think they're all due for another reminder of that. 
Foreman's Log 3. Everything's set up just the way I like it. Pain and punishment rule this house. We're bringing in new prisoners every day and shaping them up for labor under the fanatics. They can do our dirty work, build our bases, gather our supplies, act as body shields. The possibilities are endless if you break them just right. A few of my lieutenants have gone missing. The tracker among them. He's been more quiet than usual lately, and that's saying a lot. It's a loss, but who cares? There are more where that came from. The rest of those pathetic louts probably got dragged away by trogs. And, a little bit different here, Foreman's log number four. We ousted that asshole. Fed him to the trogs. It's a new dawn for the sanctum now. Order won't last long if we don't anoint another foreman soon. We're holding a crucible tomorrow. One prisoner to each lieutenant. Whoever gets the best screams rules the sanctum. So this is how they chose their leader. Best torturer. Shows you the kind of people the fanatics are, if you didn't already know. Okay. Now, the other reason I wanted to get to this point other than that... Okay, one thing I almost forgot. Back upstairs, the spot where the folks were collecting donations, I didn't point it out. This is the last safe. Right here. Okay. Alright. Now then. The other reason I wanted to show you the stuff that comes after you do the quest is... Uh, you can jump down here, and Danilo's shortcut is open. And we can head right out through this tunnel right here. Okay, I'm going to take care of the last bits of this quest, and uh, I will bring you back when we get to the Union Pittsburgh Union Rail Yard. Okay, and as the day ends, we got a red storm rolling in. So, I think that'll do it for the Trench and Sanctum. I'm going to show you the full list of all the loot here. we got a lot of loot to look at. Okay. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave here with Linux. This has been the Resolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.